almost since the day it opened more than 30 years ago. When people talked about the Skyway, it was usually something along the lines of it doesn't go anywhere or nobody ever rides it. But is it true? Was the Skyway a failure? Since it never met ridership expectations, some would argue yes. But the reality is the Skyway didn't fail Jacksonville. You can't really talk about the future of the Skyway without first looking at its past. So let's go back to the beginning. The date was April 5th, 1976. The head of the Urban Mass Transit Administration, now the FTA, announced his agency would help finance the construction of fully automated people mover systems in the downtowns of many as three cities. It would be a federally funded transit experiment and interest was initially high. UMTA received 68 letters of interest and 35 full proposals and made on-site inspections of the top 15 cities. They selected proposals from Los Angeles, St. Paul, Minnesota, Cleveland, and Houston. None would build a people mover. Three new cities, Miami, Detroit, and Jacksonville, however, would each build an UMTA-funded downtown people mover. In Jacksonville, it was called the Skyway. For Jacksonville, a people mover made sense. The business district was thriving, filled with department stores, banks, insurance companies, and more. The city swelled with tens of thousands of workers during the day, and the lure of a Skyway-type vehicle to move them around the business district was strong. City leaders asked the JTA, an independent agency of the state of Florida, to lead the effort into this downtown people mover concept. But they didn't do it alone. JTA put together a high-profile community advisory committee to follow its progress, make recommendations, and ensure that a people mover was indeed good for the city. By the time the Skyway opened its first three stations in 1989, downtown was a completely different place. Most of the major businesses had moved to the suburbs, taking would-be Skyway passengers with them. Certainly nowhere near the 100,000 workers the city predicted could potentially ride the elevated trains. The Skyway became a political football and got kicked often. Extensions to Riverside, the sports complex, Shands Hospital and more, extensions that could have provided additional ridership, never materialized. By 2009, ridership on the Skyway had dipped to under 450,000 for the entire year. But a few years later, with city leaders putting a renewed focus on downtown, the Skyway began to see somewhat of a renaissance, with nearly 5 million riders in just four years. The Skyway trains, however, were getting more difficult to keep operational. Parts were no longer available. Something needed to be done. New JTA CEO Nat Ford suggested a blue ribbon panel investigate the options. Tear it down, which also meant paying back millions to the federal government who paid for the original project. Turning it into an elevated walking and biking path or keeping it and modernizing it, which meant finding new technology to replace the aging trains. Online surveys overwhelmingly supported the plan to save the Skyway, wanting to see it expanded. The sports complex and Riverside's Brooklyn neighborhood were among the top vote-getters on the survey. Most people didn't realize how many people actually use the Skyway, and when you realize that over a year's period you have a 1.2 million person ridership, that's not insubstantial. After much research, study and deliberation, several public meetings, a recommendation from the high-profile advisory group, and one final presentation, the Skyway's future came down to a final vote of the JTA board. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Congratulations, uh, advisory committee and, and subcommittee. And with that unanimous approval, the decision to keep the Skyway was sealed. Um, I think it's the right recommendation. I think it, um, having a Skyway that is expanded and um, renewed in terms of its um, capabilities is something that will differentiate us from other cities. Skyway subcommittee member and former board chairman Kevin Holzendorf credited the work of the Citizens Advisory Group. 
You had uh, stakeholders, you had small businesses, you had large businesses, you had developers, you had community leaders, you had education community in there. All the people, when you start looking at, you know, who rides the Skyway, were there and were able to give the input. And what was great was there was never a shy moment. Everybody felt like they had an opportunity to be able to speak up and be heard. One of the biggest surprises that I had was that the amount of people from the community that came out to be part of the process and that stayed around and that they, you know, they did the comments, you know, in the public comment area. And then the biggest shocker too, which is so hard to get people to do surveys, the amount of people that responded to the surveys. Tommy Hazori, Jacksonville's mayor when the Skyway opened and current city council president, was a member of the advisory panel. Hazori concurred with a board vote and he said new developments and activities downtown will certainly help make the new Skyway work in ways the old one couldn't. Whether it goes to uh, Shands Hospital, whether it goes to the uh, Union Terminal, our convention center, wherever the new one may be and whenever that may come about and certainly now with the shipyards and the landing and some exciting things downtown but to complement those exciting things we have to get people there. The board gave JTA staff one year to formulate a plan as to what new technology would work best for a new Skyway system, expansion potential and most importantly how the JTA will pay for it. The answer was autonomous vehicles. Over the past four years the JTA has tested several AVs from multiple manufacturers and developed a plan to advance the future Skyway, now nicknamed the Ultimate Urban Circulator, or U2C, including running AVs along Bay Street in downtown, and converting the Skyway track to accommodate AVs, and then expanding the current two and a half miles to a 10 mile network to all the places people have always wanted it to go. Brooklyn, the Sports Complex, Springfield, Riverside, and San Marco. The authority has a robust autonomous vehicle testing program underway and is a nationally recognized leader in autonomous vehicle testing. For Jacksonville Transportation, the future has finally arrived.